Right, good morning, ladies and gents. It's Monday morning now, uh, 31st of October, and yeah, this is the first. Well, tell me, this is the third day of full turnout. So all the horses, well, should be either in that field there or this field I'm in now. So boys in this one, girls in next door. We do have some oldies that are in a different field, and then we've got some horsey with problems. I think most of them have got problems anyway. <laughs> so yeah, it does mean that the summer fields are now pretty much empty. So I'll just do my morning walk around and then uh, I'll show you the summer fields and what we've got planned. Right, I'm hoping the camera picks up all right. You can see all the tracks running all the way down there. And some more down here. And a few more. Up there. I'm hoping they are from a hedgehog somewhere. And see how a couple of oldies over that side. They're gonna free range. I don't know if all of this or a lot of this anyway, down these couple of fields. Um, usually they go into some of the fields that are over on the other side of the estate. But with how grazing's turned out in the last couple of years, we seem to be losing it. Um, Show jump arena, well, the jumps are coming in, hopefully, and then we'll get that book spread. And then hopefully spread this one and that one, and the one over the far side as well, before it gets too damp, because it's, uh, it's just starting to get there a bit. As long as I don't travel too much on the same spot, I think we'll be all right. Right, so we're in the first field of the three that we're on, well, the left-hand side of the caravan site. Uh, so basically what we're doing is areas like this we're just going to flatten off mow it all down things up for next year actually already it looks like i wet myself i just had to do a tapping yeah because i've broken it and there's no uh, valve on it on the line so it's a a wet train or a wet change of tap so anyway right fly on motors on if you can see through my filthy windows and uh, yeah, we'll get some of these knocked off. I'll just work my way around the fields. Right, so I think I'm starting to get some work. It's definitely been one of the Mondays. Um, we've just cleared the show jump in of jumps and uh, I had a fight with a jump. And <laughs> I seem to have lost. I'll put a picture in about now if you don't mind, but. Right, so this is where I flailed this morning. Uh, there's a load of thistles and nettles and stuff. So a quick run over the top of the flail, knock all them down. And six and eight and big poo pile. Right, so first load of 2022 autumn. I don't think we'll have much to spread in this field anyway, but I'll try and see if I can get my speed right. Because these spreaders do tend to chuck it out quite heavy. But you don't want to. spread on. Um, just greasing it up, making sure it kind of works. It does actually want a bit of a, a clean to be fair. But just grease the chain, grease the shafts, the big bearings are in it. Um, one question though, if anybody knows, is how tight that chain's supposed to be. Because at the moment, I've taken my gloves off, there's a little bit of flex in it but not a lot. Before it was kind of flapping around. Um, I'm kind of thinking that's all right. It just gives it a little bit, but not much. Um, but yeah, that's about it, really. Uh, if you haven't seen this, this is a Fleming. I have to read what it says now. MS seven hundred. <laughs> so I thought it says it better there. So MS standing for muck spreader seven hundred, I think, so the cube. Um, a bit like the trailers, the 
blue trailer that's usually there is a TR, which is trailer. Um, and that's a seven, uh, 600, I think it was. Anyway, so if you've not seen one of these before, very basic, very crude way of throwing muck out. And yes, it is full of water. Um, but basically, drive shaft in cogs and then through the shaft and chucks it out. Uh, if you haven't seen it, if you go back in my channel, there's plenty of videos of it. And hopefully, I'll get you a bit more today. Or if you go into Farmer Peas, he's got exactly the same kind of setup, just different model. They're all kind of the same. So, all right, so I'll start lifting down here. Just noticed on the trailer actually. Um, I was watching JM Farming on Sunday in his video, and they've got a Fleming trailer, a big trailer, Sally trailer. And I actually quite like that trailer he's got. But as he says, the paintwork does fade a little bit. And even covers pretty much gone now. So I might just try and get my mate to uh, sandblast that and re powder coat it. So, but yeah, on the whole, it's a decent spreader. Right, so this is it. Final product. It's uh, quite a nice covering. Not completely covered, but depends where I've been to be fair. But no, it's uh, a nice coverage for me. Don't want it too heavy because it just takes longer to rot down. And pretty much the piles that are in the corners are from what's the piles in the corners are what have been gathered up by the girls. Uh, from the horses that have been in the paddock, so it's pretty much recycled itself round. Um, so each pile has pretty much done its little area. But I do have some left down there. Um, there's obviously quite a bit there, but I've still got these two fields to do at some point. And most of the muck that came from that field was moved either into this one I'm stood in or into that pile. Um, just because it was easier at the time to shift it around. And so hopefully this will rot down fairly quick and then those lot can come into here and then I'll muck spread to that side. Well that's the plan anyway, if it comes true I don't know. <laughs> well you can see the difference between last night's spreading and this morning spreading. This has uh, gone in quite well to be fair. So uh, a bit of a heavy start up here where I started spread up, but yeah, looking good. So that's it. One, two, three, four fields done. Five fields done. So that's not a bad go. Plenty of uh, heaps gone out, so uh, yeah, happy with that. We just need to just head them down this end and that'll be it for today. So thank you very much. Catch you later. Ooh. Well, I've worked out where this uh, leak is on my tyre. It's a bit annoying. It's actually a plug that somebody's put in before, and it's uh, obviously leaking a bit. So, to a fair tire shot, but I don't really want to put another two guns with the tires on anything this year. So, uh, it's cheap. <laughs> right, another job I've just done is uh, just get wash this trailer off as well. Um, so on this, you have a bit of a problem with paintwork. See there, it's kind of steel's flaking. It's probably only cheap steel, but it's flaking all the way up where pretty much everything's, all the muck's been sat, especially this top end. So I've got the same muck spread at the moment, so what I said to the boss man is all uh, yeah, like that. <laughs> 
is I'll uh, clean it off. I'll try and get it scraped down and then uh, we'll get it painted and just paint the thick of it. I'm not sure you should be out, little fella, but you're looking quite active. I'll give you that. Right, so we're on Thursday morning. And, well, I've done another job already this morning, but I'm on to this one. Um, so this is our flooding spreader, you'll see it spreading yesterday. Um, but what I did notice the other day is um, these chains. They've got a, a paddle on the end, and a couple of them, I don't know if you can see very well, but they're not welded together. They're like, just held on. And there's a few of them that were just getting... I'm a bit warm, I'm just going to show you down here maybe better. So like that one. That one should be a square all in the middle. And it's uh, just wearing out. Can't really show it very well. So I think what it should be more like is like that, with like a, a bit more of a, I don't know, a kidney shape. Comes to a point there and back out, round, back in again, back out. And these are just starting to wear, turn into squares. So, uh, just looking at them, and then noticed that the bolts that hold them together are looking a bit thin. So, yeah, that's probably one of the worst ones compared to the steel work. So basically the chains have gone round, round, round and worn all these bolts down. So that's this morning's job. I am covered in poo already. My hands are covered in poo. My body is covered in poo. I am covered in poo. <laughs> so yes, I could have jet washed all this out and blah, blah, blah. But by the time I've done that, I'm still going to stink of it anyway. So uh, yeah, so I'm taking those paddles off as well whilst I'm doing them. So, oh, I just don't fall in. So I just end up with that rather than the plate on it. Um, I say I'm learning with all this because I've never done any work on them and I've only been given this one to use. So, um, basically, those paddles are for more for slurry so it gets a, a bigger lump of it to throw it out. And because I've been struggling with the tractor, um, yesterday I was on second high box. Uh, about 1100 RPM on the tractor and about 300 on 330 on PTO. And that thing is basically just chugging, which doesn't do any good with its e uh, EDF, e not EGRs, um, particular filter. It basically just fills up the particular filter, which is no good because then you have to burn loads of fuel to get rid of it. So hopefully, with a smaller surface area, on these chains, it might just mean I can go a bit faster, or drop a gear, engine speed up, and get the same results, which should be nice. Um, so I think there's 27 or so of these to do. Box full of bits, cutting discs, and all I'm doing is cutting through, oh, cutting through the nuts, and then pretty much braying it apart, new one in, tighten it up again, and. Uh, yeah, we'll get there, hopefully. It's just taking time and covered in crap and then stuff like that happens where it drops in that side or this side. Or... Yeah, they're fun. So, yeah, if you've never done it before, just check your bolts for where. The chains aren't too bad, actually. Um, they are actually just a standard bolt, near enough, with just a bit of a, a shoulder on it. Uh, at least with these, they'll wear, rather than the chain... There's probably half as much wear on the chain as there is on the bolt, so... Yeah. Um, and it wasn't hitting... I got asked this if it was hitting the side of the barrel, but it's not. The chain's the right length. But it's just their uh, bolts are so worn. Just for a safety factor. Because we have a lot of stuff around here, a lot of people, a lot of gear, and a lot of expensive stuff, so... Don't really want one of them chains flying off. Right, morning, ladies and gents. Hope it's Friday morning. It's another... Well, cool day, nice and bright there. I can see my breath. Anyway, it's uh, first thing this morning, back on the spreader. Changed all the flail bolts out, took the 
slurry ends, the big plates off. And they also had to go at taking those bolts off that end as well. Off the pedal arms. Which are these, just here. Come back out. Um, these were a real pain to cut off. Because when they put the bolts in, they put them in from that end. Plus they're all seized, so a bit of angle grinding. Um, so that's the first job this morning, put them back in with these bolts. I think these are Kuhn Power, power Harrow bolts. So a 10.9 bolt. Um, which I don't think they'll make much difference. And I also scraped this down, chipped all the loose steel off, because it's delaminating. And then just throwing some red oxide on. Proper red oxide. So hopefully I'll wait until this dries, and then I'll give it another coat and then top paint it if weather stays like this it should have fully dry right the other job I did yesterday was red oxide of this as well so this has got the same problem as Fleming spreader and it's just got flaking steel work in it so most of this top end where I throw most of the stuff over so just painting all that just down to there because the rest of it's all right and then just down the edges where it sideboards it. So we'll get this dried off, another coat on, leave it and then paint it with a top coat. And uh, hopefully get a few more years out of there.